This episode starts in Ellesmere on the Langothlan Canal. When winter 2022 saw the temperatures go so low that it froze the canal that never freezes. Or so we'd been told. And then when the ice melts, we finally cruise to the very end of the Langothlan Canal to the beautiful Langothlan Basin. In December 2022, the UK experienced one of its coldest winters. For our American viewers, these temperatures in the low teens Fahrenheit. Normally, the Langothlan Canal doesn't freeze because it's fed by the River Dee, so there's a flow to the canal. It's quite common for the Ellesmere Arm to freeze, as you can see here, but the temperatures have to get really low for the main canal to freeze. Normally, the boat's warm and cosy, but it can be really chilly first thing in the morning before the fire gets going. So we were doing our best to prepare for the extremely low temperatures that were forecast. Pop, do you like your new coat? Do you like your new coat? Hamish, hey, do you like your new coat? Do you like it? What do you think? Would you rather have your dinner? Want your dinner? And as the temperatures plummeted, it was far too common to wake up to ice on the windows for our liking. News of even colder temperatures to come, and the locals saying that the canal would likely freeze, we wanted to make sure that we were prepared and filled up with water, but we didn't want to lose our space. You ready? We were moored opposite the water point, so the guys came up with an ingenious plan of throwing the hose across the canal to hook it up to our boats without us potentially having to lose our really good mooring spot if we did get frozen in. That's it, keep some tension on it, where you can get it wet. We were moored up with Julia Martin on Rhapsody in Blue and Helen and Russell on their electric boat, Professor Pat Pendin. Right, Yeah, it's going to sink. As long as people send that, it's all right. And while there were hardly any boats moving, we were keeping an eye out just in case a boat was coming. And lo and behold, a boat appeared. Yeah, we'll try again. Let's, uh... <laughs> and when the boat had passed, they tried again. better last time. The good thing is it's a floating rope. So what's he doing now? Tying the tie tying the hose. Straight into yours, yeah. No, we've got We've got three quarters already. Do you want to top it up a little bit more, Pete? Put a bit more in. And we settled down to see what the next few days had in store. Does anybody else's dog take forever to make their nest like Hamish? For once the forecasters were right and the temperatures did drop low enough for the main canal to freeze. Apparently this hadn't happened for about 10 or 11 years. And we woke up one morning to such a loud noise and wondered what on earth was going on. One of the local boat hire companies was trying to get one of their fleet into the Ellesmere Yard workshop opposite where we were moored.
It was hard to capture the sound properly on video, but it sounded like somebody banging a huge drum on the side of your boat. And after that bit of excitement, we sat out the freeze in the company of good friends. and used our tried and tested method of filling up with water across the frozen canal again. <laughs> and like any good gathering of voters, there was always cake. Then it was time to prepare for Christmas. We still can't believe the low prices of groceries compared to America. And I had an American friend believe me when I said that we bred turkeys in the UK without legs and wings so that they'd fit in our smaller ovens, perfect for our narrowboat oven. And just in case anyone's wondering, no we don't do this. It's just what we call a turkey crown in the UK. We even managed to find the perfect size Christmas tree for the boat in our local Tesco's. And we tried to record a Christmas message for all of our viewers far too many times. Are you ready, Poppy? Are you ready? Look at the camera then. Look at the camera. Go on then. <laughs> and then we left the boat for a few days to spend Christmas with family. And for those of you that watched one of our latest videos with our son Alex on board singing and wanted to hear more, we were treated to a little concert from him. He was auditioning for a new musical about the young Frank Sinatra and was practicing his songs. Born in a king, I've been up and down and over and out, and I know one thing each time I find myself flat on my face. I pick myself up and get back in the race That's life I've got you under my skin I've got you deep in the heart of me And then it was back to the boat for one farewell drink with Julian Martin before we left to go on our way to the Langothlan Basin. We ended up having to leave on a very rainy day because one of the bridges we were going under to get to the basin was due to close in two days. There wasn't a lot of other boat traffic at all, but we ended up following two of our viewers. On a very gloomy day, before it got too dark, we decided to moor up at the bottom of Newmartin Locks.
If you want to see the crews from Newmarton Locks to the Aqueducts in more detail, check out our video on Top of the World. And I made a special behind the scenes video of what really happened as we were crossing the world's highest aqueduct. But after crossing the aqueduct this time, instead of turning round and going back again, we turn left to head down to the Langothlan Basin, the very end of the Langothlan Canal. Just stopped to get diesel at Trevor Basin. Yeah. Trevor? 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 Don't know. Don't know. Let's ask a local. <laughs> <laughs> and we are now heading up to the Langothlan Basin. So the bridge that we're now going under is the bridge that's closing tomorrow. So we wanted to get past this point so that we can be trapped up in the basin. Um, it's about a four, just over four miles of canal that will be putting up and down until the 20th 20, of January, January when that bridge now behind us. Yeah. <laughs> people are leaving the basin and we're trying to get in. So just a nice little four mile cruise up to the basin. Just 
told us that um, to stick to the centre of the channel because there's like ledges on either side. engine labouring as we're pushing against the flow of the canal. And there's Hamish whining in the background because he wants to get off. So as we approached the bridge hole, I got off with Hamish so that Pete didn't have to pull into the side.
walkie talkies ready, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure there's nothing coming because this is a narrow section. Hello, testing. testing, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you over and out. Can you hear me? Out. Yes, Roger. So I'm walking ahead. Make sure there's nothing coming. Which it's late in the day, so there probably isn't going to be anything coming. There's nothing coming. Watch your back. here at the perfect time because there's no other traffic and in summer there's a lot of hire boats it's a very popular place to come on holiday and I can't imagine trying to do this in summer and we're just lucky that there's no other boats around at the moment you can see parking a passing space just here to pull in I think we've been told that the next session now is doesn't have any sort of passing pace at all. The view is just amazing from here and it's perfect light. It's about half an hour before sunset. It's just beautiful. section of narrows that was 300 meters and there was one passing place there but there's no other boats around and I'm just walking on to the next section of narrows which I think is 500 meters but that doesn't have any sort of passing place at all I think it's just around this corner perhaps I haven't got to the next section of narrows yet. There's no other boats around, but there's quite a lot of walkers. Um, so it's a bank holiday. Uh, so there's a lot busier pedestrian traffic and boat traffic. So a lovely little cottage just here by the bridge. further than we thought. Still walking to find the next narrow section. It's a lot further than we thought. Should have checked the map better.
recognise this boat from other people's vlogs. The teddy sitting on top. It has it attached to the back so it can wave as they're going along. I'm at the narrow section finally. Just going to walk around the corner and see if there's anything coming. Okay, roger that. Okay, I'm at the end of the narrows now, so you can start coming through. Okay, very good. squeeze isn't it year in 2022 when we were in the basin it cost six pounds a night to moor that included your electricity you can see the pontoons with the electric points just there we've heard it's now gone up to 12 pounds a night but we still think that's good value considering that you get your electricity included and it's definitely worth it to moor in such a beautiful place next time as we make a stupid decision that puts us in a very scary situation.
And a special thank you to all of our supporters on YouTube Super Thanks and Buy Me A Coffee. We're using all of our donations to put towards new audio equipment for the channel. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and give us a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free. I saw you